Hey, Ting Ting in here. The Stable Diffusion developers just recently released the open source. They released their website and they released the model, which means you can now run it on your own PC for free on a wide range of GPUs. This video is going to be a tutorial on how to get Stable Diffusion running on your PC. But before we start, few things. If you have an AMD GPU, it's not going to work for you. There might potentially be a chance for it to work on Linux. And that's not something I'm going to get into in this video, so I don't want to waste your time. Also, how do you know if your GPU is supported? If you have a GPU with around 8 gigabytes of VRAM, it should be able to work with the normal stable diffusion thing that launched today. However, you can go as low as four gigabytes of VRAM if you use a different script that a researcher made for running the thing. The different script, all it does is make it where it uses less VRAM. The quality and everything is still the same. It just takes longer to generate. However, even if you're someone with more VRAM, like a 3080 or 3090, you still might want to use the more optimized version to generate larger images. The main stable diffusion is not going to be able to run anything under eight gigabytes. However, eventually, they will have a more compressed one. That is not the one that they're releasing today. So if you have a GPU that's less than eight gigabytes of RAM, you'd want to use this version. And that allows you to run on everything all the way down to a 1050 Ti. And if you use Stable Diffusion Discord, if you see any of the images here, it's exactly the same quality. Installing the optimized version versus the unoptimized version is basically 99% the same, except you change one thing at the end. So this video applies to if you're trying to use the optimized one or if you're not trying to use the unoptimized one. This is going to be an easy to follow tutorial. So even if you have no experience with any of these coding things, it's going to be simple for you to follow. I'm going to go through all the steps so you can understand. So don't worry if you've never done something like this before. And yeah, let's start the video. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to install Anaconda. So you're going to want to open up your web browser and go to this website here. You can pause it and take a look at it, but it will be the first link in the description. So you can just click on that. Okay, so you'll be on anaconda.com. So now you click on the download button here. You'll see the screen pop up. You want to save the anaconda file. So I'm actually going to go to my C drive. I'm going to create a new folder here called stable diffusion. And right, I'm going to save anaconda to this folder. Other thing we're going to need, you're going to go to this link right here. This is to download the main stable diffusion files. So we're on the main stable diffusion GitHub repo here. So you, you can see this. You want to click on code, then download zip. See the save screen come back up. I'm going to put that file also in the same place. I downloaded the Anaconda file, so stable diffusion. So we're just going to do this here, save. Now what we're going to do is we're going to install Anaconda. Double click the Anaconda file to install it. See this here, next, I agree, just me. You want to install Anaconda in the base location. So don't change the location that it installs in. This is important for later to just make things work easily. I made some scripts to try to make it make the process of using it a little bit easier. And it assumes that Anaconda is in the basic location. So don't change the location. All right, so you see this? Leave this as is, don't change anything. So you don't have to change anything for the install. Just keep clicking next. It can seem like it's frozen on this step. It's not, you just be patient, okay? I know people might get worried if they've never done stuff like this. You'll know it's done when you see the completed on this section. Just click next, next, and finish. It's gonna open up a page. Just close this off, you don't have to do anything here. You can delete this now, you don't need it anymore. So now we wanna download the Stable Diffusion model itself. So in order to do that, you're gonna wanna go to this place here And then when you open up the link, you'll come to this page. You'll see a thing that says you need to accept the license. It's not here since I already accepted it, but it will be right here. You'd want to click accept the license. Then you want to come to files in versions here. Click on this, click SD checkpoint, click on it, then click on download and save it to the same folder that you were saving all the other files to. So SD checkpoint V1.4, you wanna save it to this folder here. So now you wanna take stable diffusion, open up this. Yeah, you'll end up inside of the folder if, the, if you don't have a dedicated program for browsing zip file. I'll take you inside of it like that. You simply wanna take this, copy, and, and paste. And if you have a dedicated program for browsing zip files, you simply just want to take this and drag it to this folder. You don't need this zip file anymore. You can delete it now. Again, remember, you're just going to have to do this stuff once and then it'll be simple from there. So if it seems complicated, don't be too worried. So stable diffusion, 
you open up this and now you're in the stable diffusion folder here so in the stable diffusion folder you want to come here go to environment.yaml double click on that um this will open in whatever node editor it is that you have and you want to look for pi torch lightning 1.4.2 change this to be 5.0 so it should be pi torch dash lightning equal equal 1.5.0 you want to change that make sure when you're finished to save the file most of the time you can just press Control s and then close it off now what you want to do is go down to the start menu in the corner here if you just installed anaconda you should see anaconda prompt if you don't see that type anaconda prompt you can type it out yourself you see this here you want to click on this this should open up a window here. Now that you have this open, what you want to do in the inside of this window, you just want to type CD, which is short for change directory, because you're going to change the, the current folder that you're in space. And the folder you want to change to is the stable diffusion folder that you just downloaded. So how do you get that easily is go back into Windows Explorer. Just click here. You can click in this bar at the top. It should already be highlighted, but if it's not, you just click and drag to highlight yourself right click copy so click copy now you go back to the anaconda window that you had before right click paste you want to have cd followed by whichever folder you put stable diffusion in so in my case it's c stable diffusion stable diffusion mean which is the, the one the folder that we're in so you press enter and you'll see now the thing that comes at the beginning of the the line changes to be this which means i am now inside of the stable diffusion folder which is what you wanted to do so now what we want to do is we want to type while inside of this folder this is important by the way if you don't do this you'll have issues with other things so make sure you're in the stable diffusion folder here type conda this command i'll have it be in the description as well so you could copy and paste from there so i'll have a section for commands that you can go there and copy conda env short for environment create and then type dash f you, and now what you want to type is this file that's inside of the stable diffusion folder here, environment.yaml. You want to come here and you want to type that. So type environment.yaml. Spelt exactly the same as it is here. So you get conda env create dash f environment.yaml. Okay, so make sure everything is spelt here correct and whatever. And now you press enter. And what's going to happen is you're going to create the environment where stable diffusion runs. You're going to see it downloading a bunch of files here. So this will take a little bit to go through everything. So while this is downloading, you're going to want to go to this link right here, which is a file that I created just with some extra helper files that you can use. One of them being the optimized version of SD that was made by someone else. So I just copied that into there. And the other two files are just files that help with the running of SD and stuff. Okay. So when you go to here, you'll see this, you'll see this page. You just want to go up top here, click download. It should open up in a separate window, put it where all the other stable division files have been going thus far. We just copy it to here save you'll know it's finished when you see done on this section here and you'll see to activate this environment use conda activate ldm conda deactivate and so on you'll know it's finished you can just close this window off you want to go to the file that you downloaded earlier the helper files the sd files right you can just open a new window you can press Control n on your keyboard to do that and then you can either press back or click on the stable diffusion main folder again this assumes you installed it in this folder you want to go into the zip file and the files that are inside out of this zip file you want to take them from where they are here go over to the stable diffusion main folder and you want to drag them into this folder or copy them into this folder like you did for the other files just place them inside of these here good the next step you want to have here is you want to take the model file that you're downloading the one that ends in dot ckpt you want to take that file that file would be here see this is the folder where you downloaded the model files to you want to go in here so you want to take the file from there, copy it, and then come over to the stable diffusion main folder. The same folder where you just copied over optimized SD and these two other files here, right? So you'll see my, I named it model to be renamed. Yours wouldn't be named this. I just named this for dramatic effect, but you want to come here and right click on the file, rename and name it to model 
1.3, okay? Press enter, and now you've renamed the file. Okay, you've done 99% of the work here, assuming you didn't do anything wrong, okay? So we're gonna click SD high RAM run stable diffusion. Okay, so this runs the high RAM version of stable diffusion. I just named these files so that people could understand which one. So if you double click on this, you just have enter prompt and options. You can change options and stuff here. These are all the commands that you can use. You can just pause to see. Oh, by the way, I'm just gonna add this here because I didn't do this in the video. I wanna show you how to actually do a prompt normally. You type dash dash prompt followed by whatever prompt it's supposed to be. In this case, I'll just go dog, dog photo, just dog photo. I'm just gonna leave it at the default, which at default, it generates a virus playing a guitar. So if I just press enter, what I want you to look at is the VRAM usage. So if I press enter, this is on a 3070, by the way, which has eight gigabytes of VRAM. So at the default settings that generates a 512 by 512 image at 50 step, you'll see this here you can look at this and look at this you see the vram usage is going up it's going up it's going up it's going up it's going and it's back down because what you see if we look at the window runtime error cuda out of memory basically what that means is it tried to run the model and it didn't have the memory necessary on the gpu that i was using it ran out and it could not complete the operation remember this is on an eight gigabyte gpu so if you have any GPU that's eight gigabytes or less and you run without any changes, it will not work. It won't work on that, right? There will be a more optimized version coming directly from Stable Diffusion. They have not released that yet. So this is how it works right now. So we're gonna click again. So we're gonna come again and here's what we're gonna do now. We're gonna go dash dash W. So if you've ever used Mid Journey or if you've ever used the Stable Diffusion Discord, this should be familiar to you. Let's go dash dash W and type 448, this is just for illustration. So if you have a 3070, you'll see what I, what I mean here. The other thing you wanna change here is dash N underscore samples. Change it to one. At default, it generates two. So yeah, you just wanna change it to one here. This is just for illustrative purposes. Even if you're generating one image on a 3070, it doesn't work at 512 by 512. And then you just press enter. Oh, well, dash, dash. <laughs> you press enter. And again, now observe the, the VRAM. Goes up, goes up, goes up goes up 7.8 yeah it stops at 7.8 there and it starts to it, it then it starts to generate for some reason it's taking really really slow i don't know why it's taking long it's probably because i'm recording right now yeah it's probably because i'm recording but i can tell you if you run this normally with your 3070 it takes like about seven seconds to generate an image it doesn't take long at all but i just wanted to illustrate to you that on a 37 and 8 gigabyte GPU, you can't even generate at the native resolution if you use the traditional settings. So now what I'm going to show you is if you use the low RAM version of SD, what happened? So I double click this one now. And again, I'm not going to change anything other than the samples. I'm going to N sample, change it to one. And you can look at the VRAM here. And this is at base settings, by the way. So 512 by 512. So it goes up and it goes up to about 4.6. So it's much less than the other one. So at 4.6, you can see that it's running. I feel this one isn't getting slowed down. Just so you know, by the way, this one traditionally is about like three to four times faster. Um, the regular SD got slowed down because I'm recording a video right now. So it slowed down. But this one, because it uses less VRAM to begin with, it actually isn't affected as much. And good. I didn't show you guys the images the last time, but I'm actually going to go in here. You can go to the folder that's the same, the same folder that you're in. You go to outputs, text to image samples, and all the images come into this folder. So you can see this is the first image that was generated. I still want to show some other stuff here about using it and, and kind of getting a hang for the difference between like mid journey and the difference between like using Discord interfaces and using the thing directly yourself. So I already showed that with a 3070, the max resolution I could get 448 by 448, right? That was the max I could do. But if I use the low RAM version, I can actually get, yo, know, so we did 768 by 768 keep in mind this takes longer if you watch the video as i said it's slowing down because i'm recording but traditionally generating images with the regular traditional sd is like seven seconds on a 2070 but with this it's slower what you can do however i'm not going to wait for this to finish because it's going to take a while i just wanted to show you that it will generate at that higher resolution okay but one thing i wanted to show you and come back here and i'm going to go dash dash n 
underscore iter. What this does is that it will iteratively generate images. So I make sure it's at one sample. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this to 50 dash dash iter 50 dash dash n. And this is the high RAM version. And I'm still on the 3070 here. So I have to go W448 in order for it to work dash dash 448 on the oh, dash dash H448. And then we enter. And we can go to the output folder. Yeah, you can look and you'll see in this folder. And again, remember, this would traditionally take like about seven seconds to generate, right? And yeah, now, now we see another image get generated here. So this is a different version of a virus playing a guitar. A painting of a virus playing a guitar. And then we wait. And then another image. That's another virus playing a guitar. And the thing is, you could just keep doing this. You could leave the, I mean, like, because it's your own PC, you could leave this running like 24 seven if you wanted, right? If it takes you like, say seven seconds. Yeah, that works out too. In that hour, you can generate 240 images. So this is a re one of the really cool things you can do. And especially when you have faster GPUs as well, like a 3090 or something, where it's just generating like a few seconds. It's even better because you could quickly just go through and just generate a bunch of images. And when it, when you get an image that you want, you just stop it. So it stops generating and you don't have to make it where you generate and then wait and generate and then wait. But before I end the video, there's one last little trick that I want to show you. You can make with just one line of code, you can actually make the stable diffusion version more efficient. Here's what you do. So you come in here, your scripts, text to image. So you come edit this. You can just use notepad. You don't have to use anything too crazy, I guess. You don't have to use anything too crazy. Just come in here and here's where you want to do, right? After you open up this file, you want to come down under model instantiate from config, config.model. You want to come under this line, add a new line with enter, and you want to type this model dot half. What this does is it takes the model and it runs it at a different precision. I don't, I'm not entirely sure what that means exactly, but I can tell you that it reduces the requirements. But if you look at the results of the images, there doesn't seem to be any actual perceivable difference. I think sometimes it can be different, but it shouldn't be different in the vast majority of cases. Anyway, so we save it. We save this file. We come back out and now we're going to click SD. This is a high RAM version. Okay. This time I'm actually going to add a prompt in prompt dog photo prompt dash dash n sampled one. Okay. So now remember, this is the version that I ran earlier that went up in RAM usage and wasn't able to work. Okay. So if we come here to, you can look at 0.9, 8.0, I'm going to press enter and you can look at the VRAM usage, the dedicated VRAM GPU memory. And you can look at both of these here. I can see it run, run. I also think it might actually run at the speed it was supposed to run at too, because it's using less RAM overall to run at the correct speed. Uh, I guess not really, but you'll notice it's at 512 by 512. It runs at seven point something here. And now it's, it's, it's able to actually generate. I can also tell you that it's faster when I'm not recording as well. So like, yeah, it just generates the image there. So now you gain access to being able to generate at the native settings on a 3070, which you wouldn't normally be able to do. All right, guys, thanks for watching the video, guys. If you like this video, I make a bunch of other videos about Stable Diffusion, not usually tutorials on how to install it, but like other stuff. It'd be nice for you to check out the two other videos I made about Stable Diffusion. And yeah, guys, thanks for watching the video.